Hello, this is video 57. We're going to continue our discussion on torque. So to recap what we just talked about, I have a question. It says the four forces shown have the same strength. Which force would be most effective in opening the door? So we just talked about torque and how it's talking about the tendency of a force to cause a rotation. So we have four different forces here, so which one would, would cause more rotation? Which, which one would produce or which one would exert more torque? And we just learned that the definition of torque was force perpendicular times r. The perpendicular component of the force is what causes the rotation. We said that if a force is parallel to the object being rotated, it does not cause any rotation. So F2 does not exert any torque. We said that R is the distance from the pivot to where the force is applied. The bigger the R, the more torque. So F1 is, has an R that is this big, while F4 has an R that is that big. So F1 definitely exerts more torque than F4. So we can cross out F4. And then we are having to uh, decide between F1 or F3, are they the same or different? So only the perpendicular component causes rotation. So F1 is perpendicular. If you're perpendicular, you're getting the most out of your force because all of it is causing rotation. When you're at an angle, well, that perpendicular component of this diagonal force is only this big because it has a horizontal component that does not cause any rotation. Only the perpendicular component is causing a rotation, so it's going to be smaller than F1 because the components of a force, of a vector, are always smaller than that vector. So the best answer is force 1 exerts more torque on the door. So now we're ready to talk about our second definition of torque. This one is still the same definition that is still a force causing rotation, but we're using a slightly different equation. Instead of using torque equals F perpendicular times R, we're going to use F times D. And D is called the moment arm, it's also called the lever arm. It's the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line along which the force acts. So that's a lot to take in, but this picture really helps to understand. So D is right here. D is this distance right here. So we have this force here that's diagonal. And what we do is we can extend this force line. Some people call it the line of action. I just like to call it the force line. Whichever, wherever the force is, just extend the line backward and forward if you want to. Just extend it. And then you want to find the shortest distance from the pivot to that force, to that force line. And the shortest distance is always perpendicular to a line, right? If you have a line and you have a point, what's the shortest distance to that line? Well, you're not going to go that way or that way. The shortest distance is always the distance that is perpendicular to your object. So that's what this moment arm here is that shortest distance to that force line. So that being said, if we know R here and we know this angle, then we could find that moment arm by using R sine theta because D would be opposite the angle. So it turns out that using this definition of FD, if we're given angle theta that touches the horizontal, that D gets written as R sine theta, and we have F R sine theta for our definition. If we go back to the previous definition from the last video, in that one, we said, okay, F perpendicular is right here, that's F perpendicular, that's opposite of my angle, that's going to use F sine theta, and then I'm going to multiply by R. Well look, 
These are the exact same definitions. It's just a different way to think about it. Most people, when I mention the second definition, they think to themselves, well, this is much harder. I prefer that first definition. So what I'm going to tell you is that you don't prefer the first definition. It really depends on the problem. So before we get to that, we'll finish out this slide here. Same, says the same thing as before. The units for torque is Newton times meters. The sign convention for torque is if you're rotating counterclockwise, it's positive. If you're rotating, rotating clockwise, it's negative. So the only thing that has changed here in this definition number two is we're writing F times D instead of F perpendicular times R. So I have this slide here to tell us, well, how do we know which definition that we want to use? So this is not going to be valid 100% of the time, but it works most of the time. The first thing is to identify the pivot point, which is usually given. So in this case, we're rotating a door. The pivot point, the axis of rotation is going to be right here. I usually draw a big black dot where my pivot point is. So now we're trying to figure out which equation that we're going to use. F perpendicular R or F times D. So use the following as a guide. Use F perpendicular R if the object is horizontal or vertical and the force is diagonal. So an example is right here. The object is horizontal, the force is diagonal. Again, this does not work all the time. It's just because if you have a problem that looks like this, or maybe the object is vertical and there's a diagonal force, usually you're going to be given that angle theta. So if you're given that angle theta, it's usually not too hard to find F perpendicular. And if you're given where the force acts, then usually you know the distance R as well. So that's why I say it's usually easier to use F perpendicular R for these types of situation. But you're going to use F times D if the object is diagonal and the force is horizontal or vertical. Again, doesn't work all the time. But here's an example. This is a problem that you're going to see, which you're going to see both of them, but the second one here is usually a ladder or something against a wall, so something is diagonal. So in this case, if this were a ladder against a wall, well, this would be the weight of the ladder pulling it down. So the reason that we want to use F times D for this case is because usually, if you have this angle here, then it's actually easier, in my opinion, to find D. Because D, we just learned, was the shortest distance from the force line. So this is my force. So I extend that force line. And you need to practice this. I'm extending the force line. You don't have to draw arrows. I was just extending that force line. The shortest distance from the pivot to that force line. So you know the shortest distance is the perpendicular line. So that's D right here. And usually, you're going to know D or you can easily find it if you know R and theta, then D in this particular case here would be R cosine theta. That would be D. And then you would just multiply this force times this distance. And then of course you have to pay attention to the sign of the torque. I forgot to put that in here. But is the force rotating the object clockwise or counterclockwise? And the way to know that is you really have to fix this point. What I do is I physically put my thumb, where's my thumb, there's my thumb. I put my thumb physically on that pivot point. And then with my other hand, so let's see if I can see the camera here. So there's my thumb. My other hand, I say, okay, that force is pulling upwards. So how is it, what kind of rotation is it causing? And actually this camera is making me 
be inverted, so don't use the camera, it's a bad idea. But if you fix this point and then you pretend that you're pulling on this object, then you can visualize that it's going to rotate that way, which is counterclockwise, which is going to be positive. If you fix this point right here with one hand, and then you pull with the other hand, then you should visualize that this one would actually also make it go counterclockwise. So you can't think, oh, well, if the force is going up, that's counterclockwise, and if it's going down, it's clockwise, because that's not the case. It depends where the pivot point is where, where the force is. If this object were like this, with the force going down, well, in this case, this is the pivot point. Now this downward force would cause a clockwise rotation. So this is just to really give you an idea of how to calculate torque. Once you know which definition to use, then plug and chug into that equation and pay attention to the sign of the torque. So we're going to do some examples. I'll have to do that in part B.